What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna discuss my five most recommended tips that you need to know before you start building your very first PC. Let's jump into it. What's up guys, it's Jason and this is Tech Rated. On this channel, I do a lot of computer builds, tech reviews, software tutorials, things like that. So after this video, if that seems like something that you're interested in, go ahead, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future content. But in this video, I wanted to share with you all my most important tips that I feel like you should know as far as building your first gaming PC. So I'll go ahead and start by saying that this video is intended for someone new that has never really built a computer before. So as of right now, this is an amazing time to build a computer. Now I'm not really talking about the components that are about to be released or have been released. I'm just talking about the amount of information that is out there for you the new builder so there are plenty of tutorials pretty much components have become standardized there is a slight difference when it comes to your cpus and all of that but we'll get to that in a minute but components are pretty much standardized and it's not really that difficult to do as long as you've done your research and you've done your homework so the way i look at building a computer it's kind of like building a puzzle or like say building a lego set but with wires and cables and all of that stuff you can buy the wrong processor for the wrong motherboard and all of that and that can definitely make some you know give you some problems in your build but but as long as you do the proper amount of research and all of that stuff, your build will go just fine. My very first tip would be to watch videos on YouTube about building PCs. And then when you think you've watched enough, go ahead and watch some more. You can never watch enough PC building videos. There's plenty of them out there. One of the most important things that you're going to want to focus on in the beginning is just videos that focus on the computer parts itself. So what I'm gonna do for this particular video, since I do not have a build video or any type of videos going over the components, I'm going to actually link some of my favorite videos below in the description. So after this is over, you can go back and check those videos out. So before you even start building your machine, you're gonna to wanna to know exactly what all of the components do. You're gonna know how to seat the certain components like your processor, your memory, how to attach your cooler to your processor, the socket and all of that stuff how a lot of these different builders will build their PC. Some may start by putting their motherboard in the case first. Some may start by slotting or inserting their processor into the motherboard before they even put the motherboard in the case. So what you're gonna do is watch these videos and then kind of develop your own strategy on what will be more comfortable for you to do. In my opinion, there's no right or wrong way as far as order goes when it comes to inserting your components into your computer or adding them to your case. It's really whatever you're more comfortable doing. Now for my second tip, I would suggest that you avoid static at all costs. So if you have an area in your home that does not have carpet, I would suggest build there. So preferably somewhere like wood floors or tile floors would be the obvious option there. So another thing that you have to worry about is humidity. Basically in the winter time, the humidity can drop, which makes the air a lot more dry and then increases the chance for static buildup. So one thing that you can do to prevent or fight the static buildup would be to wear some type of wrist strap that goes that attaches on your wrist and goes to the computer itself now these are sold in computer toolkits or individually i'll drop those again in the link below and lastly to avoid static do not wear clothing that basically is static friendly like wool or synthetic materials basically on build day stick to cotton Tip three is going to be make sure you know how to install your processor. So whether you get an Intel or an AMD based CPU, you definitely want to know the steps to install whichever one you decide to buy. Now there again, there are going to be several videos online for this, but in this video, I'm actually going to include those steps. I'm going to show you how easy it is to install both because I feel like if anything else, that's the one thing I can show you while making this video is how to install each CPU. Now, while this is probably one of the most scary steps, it's actually not that complicated. Once you do it a couple of times, it's very simple. Now, these two CPUs and the sockets are gonna be very different. So when you're talking about an Intel socket, you're looking at what is called an LGA socket or a land grid array socket, meaning that the pins actually come from the motherboard to make contact with the processor itself, the Intel processor itself. Now, AMD uses something called a PG GA for their socket or the pin grid array, meaning that the pins are actually on the bottom of the processor itself. So basically you just have to line those up when you're selling the processor. Each processor itself will have a little triangle on the corner of the processor indicating where you need to place that corner into the socket of the motherboard. So while installing a CPU can be one of the most stressful parts of building your computer just because of the cost of the component itself, it's actually one of the more easier things to do. So I'm gonna demonstrate, I'm gonna let my boys demonstrate how to install the CPU so you can see just how easy it is. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to install a, an AMD processor. For you guys, the, the first step to look for is the little triangle on the bottom right for you, bottom left for me. On the other side is the little dot that you can look for on the exact side as the triangle. Another important thing to know is the triangle 
on the processor has to line up with the triangle on the motherboard, which in this case is the top left. So I would match that up. You'll feel it drop into the socket and you would push it down here at click and it's in. Now I'm going to show you how to install an Intel processor. You have to match up the triangle on the corner of the processor to the triangle on the corner of the socket. Then put the processor in the socket and close the latch. So my fourth tip that I would offer you guys as far as building your first computer would be to just keep it simple. When you see a lot of these videos online, there's gonna be really awesome things added to a lot of these computers that look really advanced. So I'm talking like water cooling, RGB lighting, all of that stuff. So of course that just makes a gaming PC or a PC in general just look really, really awesome. But it also complicates the build significantly. You have fan controllers, you have RGB lighting controllers, and then water cooling with all of the tubing and all of that stuff, it's very complex. Get the components you need, keep it very, very simple. Do not add anything to it that's gonna overcomplicate it. So get your processor, motherboard, RAM, video card, power supply, all of that stuff, we'll come back to the power supply here in a minute, but just keep it simple. Get all of that installed, get it built, get it set up and get it running. And then like I said, once you get a feel or an understanding of how the computer works and make sure everything's fine, then if you want to, you can go back in, start adding some RGB lighting, some lighting strips, some water cooling or whatever. So my last tip of my five tips that you need as far as building your first computer would be to manage your cables and make sure you have really good cable management. Cable management helps you stay organized. It helps you understand what wires are running from what component to the motherboard. It does make it real easy for you to identify certain components, whether you're having an issue getting a hard drive configured or whatever. So it's real easy to keep all of that under control if you keep your cable management and everything in order. A lot of time motherboards will come with labels that you can attach to certain wires or cables so that it will help you identify what each cable runs to or what its purpose is. Cable management is definitely something that you're going to improve over time. I know when I built my first computer, my cable management was terrible, especially since back in that time, we didn't really have these side panels with the glass side panels and, and all of that. I was able to just put the side on the computer and hide a lot of those cables and we didn't have the power supply shrouds and all of that stuff. So I didn't really have to worry about that. It was a skill I developed over time. So don't freak out if your cable management's not perfect. The biggest thing is, is that you try to manage everything and you keep everything organized but now what I'm gonna do is share with you a couple more that you can use if you want you can leave out you don't really have to but this can even make your build process a lot easier so we're gonna call these my two or three bonus tips to go along with this video. And my first tip would be to buy a modular power supply. Now, modular power supplies are gonna cost a little bit more than say your regular power supplies, but you get to determine and choose what cables you actually attach to the power supply and use only the ones that you need. You're not trying to manage or tuck away any type of cables underneath the power supply shroud or manage any unnecessary cables in general. You're only using the cables that you need. The rest of the cables you can leave in the bag that comes with the power supply and you know, whenever you need them, whenever you upgrade, maybe you get a better GPU or you add a hard drive or an SSD, you can always go back, get the cable and then add it to the build. But a modular power supply reduces the amount of cables you have to manage and it just makes your build a lot less messy. Another little tip would be to buy a motherboard that has a built-in IO shield, whether you're an experienced builder or whatever. At some point, when you've been building your computer, you have forgotten to place this in your computer case and you've had to take your motherboard back out. A lot of motherboards these days come with the IO shields already pre-installed on the back of the motherboard, so it's just something that, at this point in time, I recommend that you go ahead and get. So one of the last things that I can offer as advice for you guys is to use PC Part Picker. What PC Part Picker does is allows you to go through and pick the components you want, depending on your budget, and then it tells you whether you have any type of compatibility issues or not. If you do have a compatibility issue, PC Part Picker will let you know, and then you can go back in and change some of the parts of your build and make sure that everything is compatible when you get it home and you're ready to build. And guys, I hate to say it, but once you get into building your own PC, your PC is basically never done. If you have any questions regarding the video or building your very first computer, let me know in the comments below. I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and I'll see you all in the next video.